I want to tell you guys about this phenomena down here in Nashville called Broadway or Lower Broad, as people will call it. There's probably 50 bars, I'm guessing 50 bars, and each one of those bars has three or four levels. Each level has a stage and there's a band plan from about 11 in the morning, 11 midday, till about 1 or 2 in the morning. So there's music from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Every day on three or four levels, there's a whole strip of bars. So we're talking 150 bands going all day. And most of these places have the same set times. And it's really crazy because it, no one calls it a gig. It's really, they call it like a shift. So um, most of the bars and the clubs, they have the same set times. So I think it's like 11 to 2, 2 to 6. Everybody's locked. So these musicians down here will do doubles. They'll do triples. Some of these people do quads, meaning they'll do four four-hour shifts or two, two, two four-hour shifts in a day. And that's really how they're making their money. And it's, it's really something to behold because I haven't seen anything like that anywhere else in the world. I lived in Hawaii for a long time. I played a lot of tourist gigs out there. I live in California and I was doing a lot of my own original songs out in California and playing a lot for Disney and stuff like that. But never have I seen such a, it's not a factory, but just like this money making, sell that booze and keep the party going downtown all day, every day. And it's really it's, I mean, I find it to be very interesting. And, of course, there's a lot of, the, the consequence of that is a lot of people are down there and they're just not into it. So they're super talented and they're doing all these shifts, but it's, it's like another job for them. So they're really, you can see it on their face, they are just not happy at all. And I get it. Nobody, nobody wants to sing uh, Friends in Low Places six times a day. I mean, if you really love music, it would start to hurt your soul a little bit, I think. But at the same time, you're making all these people happy and you're making pretty good money with your skills. So it's kind of a, a trade-off. Now, most recently I've been playing down there with four other guys from my jiu-jitsu school. So these are my buddies from jiu-jitsu who are also musicians. And we're like, hey, let's put a band together and go play downtown. This is usually not the case. You, uh, most of these bands that I see down there, and I say mostly, meaning more often than not, it's a bunch of pickup bands or people who are like kind of, they know all the songs. All, most of the bands are playing about the same hundred songs. And if you don't know the songs, you're reading the chart. And some of these people are on like ultimateguitar.com or something like that. But the really good players, they're on this. There's like a Dropbox of like 2000, 2000 Nashville numbers charts. And so it gets to be kind of fun and a challenge to do one of these pickup gigs. Usually I'm playing with the guys from my jiu-jitsu school, but sometimes I'll play with like another singer that I don't know that well or somebody that I've just had as a sub for me come in and I'll go and play these gigs and they're, oh, for some reason, they're always really last minute. There's even a Facebook group that you uh, you have to be accepted in. It's a private Facebook group of all the cats that are playing downtown and if someone needs a sub, they'll put it on this this Facebook group and a lot of these people will just show up. So I've hired some people in a last minute emergency situation, emergency situation, or, and I've stepped in, like, let's say I'm playing and I get a text that says, hey, can you play at Tootsie's at six? And I'm getting off at five. Well, I'll just wheel my stuff out the back door and right over to Tootsie's and then play another set. And you never really know what the songs are going to be, but it's generally the same set. Super interesting, and it's a super fun challenge if you are in the right mindset. You have to be so unflappable. When If shit hits the fan, you got to be ready to just roll with it. And uh, when, I'm, when I've done it as a sideman for people, it's super... You just have to have this, like, it's no big deal. And at the same time, I'm going to make this sound as good as I possibly can. So the singer will turn to me and say, can you play Pour Some Sugar on Me? And, I'm, and I'll just say yes. And, or the, the worst is when they ask you, do you know this song? Do you know this song? And, I'll, and there's no 
the word no means so many different things to so many different people. Some people, you say, hey, do you know this song? To them, that just means have, they've heard it before. Other people, if you say, hey, do you know this song? That means they actually worked out the real parts off the record. So it's, that's really not, not the right thing to say. Hey, do you know the song? But I usually just say, let's just play it. Even if I don't know the song, I'm like, just, just play it. If I can't find the chart in that 2000 chart Dropbox of Nashville numbers charts, most of these are songs that have been on the radio and I've heard them or they follow the general format of the way popular songs work and you can make it happen. You, uh, you don't, you don't need to know it to get it across the finish line, unless you're the singer. The singer, on the other hand, you gotta at least know the melody because these people, these places are crowded. They're crazy crowded with drunk people having a great time. You at least gotta be able to sing the song well enough to where they can sing along. Otherwise, you can, you, let's say that you go to the six chord instead of the four chord, it'll probably be okay. And then the next time that part of the song comes up, you can, you'll, you remember, oh, okay, it, go, it doesn't go to six, but the melody worked on either one of those chords. You figure that stuff out on the fly and it's no big deal, but at the same time, you really want to make it sound as good as you can. So you, no, don't get me wrong, no, not everyone is doing this the same way that I am. Some people, they just learn their songs and they only do what they do and they don't really like to touch any other songs. So other people are down there just getting drunk while they're playing and it sounds like shit. That's not for me. I, I'm looking to make the experience super musical and because I love music and I and I want to get better so that's part of the reason if I p take a pickup gig like that it's definitely not for the money it's to learn something and really just have a good time I could see how a lot of people down there they could just get real burnt out on this constant same vibe everyone's getting drunk it's not really about you Let's say that you really want to be an artist and you're down there and you're doing that to make money. It's going to suck the artistry right out of you because you're, it's not about you. That's what's liberating is you can just play the songs and enjoy yourself, make some money because it's not about you putting on a show. But if you want to be an artist and you're down there and it's just, you're just one of these 150 bands that's going at any time, it's probably going to suck the, the life and the, the inspiration out of you. Maybe. I know people that do it. There's a singer down here who actually is from California, and I just respect, totally respect her. I've, I've never really played a gig with her, but I see that she writes her own tunes and does her own original shows, and she's killing it down there on Broadway. And they say that like on the weekends, you can make some big money because the tips are, are really big. Now, when I'm the leader, I really have a great time because I, I think I'm funny on the mic. Maybe I'm not. But I do have this like unflappable attitude of I'm going to make it sound as good as I can, but keep the party going at the same time. So if you're too stiff and you like the songs aren't sounding the way you want them to, it's going to get in your head. The audience is going to see it. They're going to bounce. They're not going to throw the money in the tip jar. But a lot of times it's, it's a, the standard is like 20 bucks per request. So if you know a lot of songs or you can just kind of fake your way through a lot of songs, you can you can actually do really well and make a lot of money and have a great time. That's why I do it with my buddies from jujitsu is because not only do we like, we can actually make it sound good and get in a vibe and debrief and make things sound better the longer that we play together. But it's, it's nice to spend, if you're going to spend every day or a lot of time doing something, you want it to be with people that you like. So, um, Nashville's Broadway. Maybe I'll make another video of like the songs or the, the, uh, <laughs> The crazy stuff that's happened down there. I mean, stuff from like, guy will put in a hundred bucks to hear Sweet Home Alabama. The song's done, and he comes over and puts another hundred bucks to hear Sweet Home Alabama again. And it's just kind of weird because you feel like this human jukebox. It's all over the place. And depending on how you're feeling, it could be a good day or a bad day. The same things could happen based on what... You, the same things could happen and you could interpret it, different, interpret it differently based on how you're feeling. So just like anything else, maybe more so than anything else, your mental attitude and being like having a positive outlook is going to make these gigs really fun. Otherwise, it's just going to be rough. So hit me with any questions. I would love to talk more about all kinds of gigs that I've played or super crazy stories that have happened on gigs. And I got to say, this Nashville's Broadway is something to behold. If you've never been in Nashville, 
come out here and even if you're not really a country music fan or going out drinking isn't really your thing i think you would still enjoy seeing what this this culture of live bands all condense into like six city blocks rocking playing from 11 a.m to 2 a.m every day all right hit me with any questions thanks for watching you guys